Russian President Vladimir Putin said he could use conventional missiles against the United States and its European allies within striking distance. This if they allow Ukraine to use long-range Western weapons to strike deeper into Russia. Putin made the remarks at a rare and first face-to-face -face meeting with international news agencies in St. Petersburg since the start of Ukraine war. Putin said that the West was wrong in assuming that Russia will not use its nuclear weapons. He also warned that Kremlin's nuclear doctrine should not be taken lightly. For some reason, the West believes that Russia will never use its nuclear arsenal. We have a nuclear doctrine. Look at what it says. If someone's actions threatens our sovereignty and territorial integrity, we consider it possible for us to use all the means at our disposal. This should not be taken lightly, superficially but professionally. When asked about NATO Chief Jens Stoltenberg's calls to allow Ukraine to use Western weapons to strike Russian territory, Putin differentiated between different missiles. However, he warned that permitting Kyiv to strike Russia with ever more powerful weapons could be a serious escalation that would lead the West towards war with Russia. Russian president criticizing Western arms supplies to Ukraine argued Moscow can supply weapons to other countries, threatening the West in return. If someone thinks it is possible to supply such weapons to a war zone to attack our territory and create problems for us, why don't we have the right to supply weapons of the same class to the regions of the world where there will be strikes on sensitive facilities of those countries that do this against Russia. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky arrived in Qatar for talks with Emir Sheikh Al Thani. The two leaders discussed the return of Ukrainian children and other war issues. Since 2022, Qatar has aided in bringing back dozens of children taken to Russia and occupied territories during the more than two-year war. Now for more on this, we are being joined by Ben Eris, founder and editor-in-chief of BNE Intelli News and former Moscow bureau chief for the Daily Telegraph. Sir, always a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Sir, Russia is getting increasingly irked by the involvement of the West in the war with Ukraine, saying that it will start arming other countries to hit targets in the West and also saying that if Russian allies are attacked, it will lead to a response from Russia as well. What is your assessment of these statements? This is part of the ongoing creeping escalation that we've been seeing in this war throughout since the beginning. If you remember right back in the beginning uh, that the U.S. supplied Ukraine with Javelin missiles, uh, these anti-tank missiles, very effective they were, but, was, uh, but told Ukraine they couldn't use them except in extreme uh, circumstances. And since then, the missiles, the, the arms that have been sent have been progressively been getting more powerful and more numerous and the restrictions on the use of them in order to prevent provoking Russia into a direct clash with with NATO have been slowly fading away and now we're up to the point where we're very close to the red line um, where Russia and NATO go head to head Putin's just played another card um, he said that because of the, uh, the U.S. and the West's decision recently to uh, authorize Ukraine to use uh, U.S. and NATO-made missiles mm. to strike targets inside Russia, that he's going to respond, um, but he's not gone the whole way. He's not said that I'm going to hit uh, targets who are supplying weapons uh, to Ukraine, say ammunition dumps in Poland or somewhere like that. What he's threatening to do is destabilize conflicts elsewhere. So Russia's already friends with uh, Iran, um, Iran's backing Houthis. I mean, maybe Russia is going to give more and some of its more sophisticated missiles in order to destabilize things in the Red Sea, in the Middle East. Hmm. Um, and this is something, of course, that the West doesn't want to see. Hmm. But it's a response to the Western decision to allow Ukraine to use its missiles against Russian targets right. inside Russia. And again, there are restrictions on that, too. It's been a card played by the U.S. where they said that uh, Ukraine can use the HIMARS missiles, but they can't use the ATCMS, uh, the much more powerful, hmm. longer-range American missiles to hit things that are much deeper in Russian territory, specifically the oil refineries, right. which are far away and the HIMARS won't, won't reach. Uh, right, sir. Uh, just on that, the Russian president also mentioned that the war may end in two to three months if the United States were to stop aiding Ukraine in its counteroffensive. Now, what does that mean? What sort of an end to the war do you think he's talking about? 
Oh, he's talking about Ukraine's capitulation. I mean, the war in Ukraine is now going very badly. I mean, the front line has not moved more than a few kilometers in most of the last year. But uh, this year, since Ukraine effectively did get stopped supplying uh, weapons from the states, then the, they're in retreat. They've lost some 700 square kilometers um, in since the beginning of the year, according to, to um, the Institute of War. And, and they're going backwards. Um, and Putin's right. If uh, the U.S. doesn't provide more weapons, and it did this $61 billion military package, but those weapons are only very slowly arriving in Ukraine. If, you, if the U.S. cuts off Ukraine completely, then um, they're facing defeat in the face. They can't keep fighting without weapons, yeah. without ammunition, what they don't have at the moment. But, I mean, I don't think that's realistic. I mean, the West yeah. continues to dribble in sufficient supplies to allow the Ukrainians to hold out. And the Ukrainian zone, its drones, its homemade drones are lethal. Um, and they've made the line of contact to no man's land, a no-go zone. Anyone that goes into there on either side is going to be killed with the drone. So we kind of have a stalemate with Ukraine in slow retreat in the face of a brutal Russian onslaught. Uh, all right, so now... Another thing that he mentioned, Putin said that Russia's nuclear doctrine, that's not something that should be taken lightly. What does that point to? What do you think he's implying? It's, it's Russia's trump card. It's, it's why NATO is being so careful, why it's pulling back and holding back so much of the powerful weapons that Ukraine needs to win. If Ukraine wins, if it ejects Russia from its territory, then, uh, and, and moreover, if they start hitting targets inside Russia, the, the nuclear doctrine says that if Russia faces, quote unquote, an existential threat, then it's allowed to use nuclear missiles in a first strike. And by waving this card, um, he prevents NATO from really sending, you know, the, the kind of numbers and, and, and the volumes of arms and, and ammo that would allow Ukraine to win. And so by playing this card, he's hoping to to limit the uh, amount of arms that are being sent and specifically and as it's working um, to hmm. make the US hold off and say, look, you can use the high mass, but you can't use the really powerful ATA CMS missiles, which are actually make a difference in the war. And so okay. it leaves Russia in a position where it can just grind away at Ukraine and Ukraine can never properly hit back. Okay. All right. Well, Mr. Ben Harris, thank you so much for joining us on uh, We on World is One. Always a pleasure to have you. Always a pleasure. For latest news, download the Vion app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.